All right, hope we got the kinks worked out. We had a bad video start. Let's do this one. We're gonna do Lewis structures, but before we do that, we have to talk about bonds, dipole vectors. And a vector is just a measurement that has two features, a size, like all measurements have, and a direction. So some of these are pointing to the left, some are pointing to the right, and you correctly noticed before this video that they always point away from the less electronegative towards the more electronegative atom. Point away from the less electronegative atom towards the more, the, the more electronic atom. And our numbers, I'm just going to put them here. 2.5, we have to memorize them. And that was carbon. 2.5. And then on the second row, everything's related by 0 0.5, increasing towards the most electronegative element, fluorine. Hydrogen is just as important as carbon in this course, and it doesn't have any reference memorization feature, so it's just a random, you gotta memorize it. And then there's some trends. Sulfur, selenium, chlorine, bromine, iodine. I'm getting the ones we really need to know. It does that. I don't, we've never found out why it loves doing that. It just uh, I clicked on the down here and then the right I clicked on the right arrow here. But the fact is it didn't write it where I was writing either. <laughs> it just used. Okay. Uh for iodine. So if you remember nitrogen and chlorine are the same, that helps. Textbook says uh you can use knuckle. Because knuckle looks like there's a nitrogen and a chlorine together. Whatever works for you. Uh, CSI is nice. Crime scene investigation. They're not as popular programs as they used to be back in the day. Everybody would have known what that means. But right now, you know, CSI means 2.5. 2.5 for C. Got it already. 2.5 for S. 2.5 for I. And the rest are just follow the periodic table. On the periodic table, you get big jumps going from row two to three, and then all the jumps are small. Go to row four, it's a very small jump now. And the same direction, you got to get something between three and 2.5 for bromine. Take a stab. I'll give you full credit no matter what you put, as long as it's between 2.5 and three, and it, you're middle-ish. So if you said 2.7, I'm giving it to you. You're only like 0.1 off. It's 2.8. Same for selenium. It's about the same jump down, 2.2, 2.3. I'll take either one. And that's 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 pretty much what we need to know. There's not a lot, just patterns. You have to know them like that it's part of your language. You think if you had to read a book and every time the word the came up, you had to look it up in a dictionary. You're not going to be reading too many books in your life, are you? Reading will not be an enjoyable opportunity for you. Well, if you don't know electronegativities, you, I mean, a secondhand foundation of chemistry, it's like you don't want to learn the characters in Shakespeare before you write a test on a Shakespeare play. <laughs> That's not good. You got to learn the characters in this play, and it's organic chemistry. The players are atoms. Okay. Here we go. We're ready for an activity, finally. Oh, we didn't write down these guys. 2.1, that explains why the arrow points to the left. Uh, the difference, delta En, I call it. Always do small minus large, so your numbers are positive. Some of you know that's called a nonpolar bond. And all nonpolar bonds have to be covalent, right? 
And this one, 3.0. The delta En is 1.0, right? What do you have when, what's your prediction for bond type when the difference is higher than 0.5? Well, 0.5 is the cutoff, but it's not even a rule, it's a guide. Oh, did I get the wrong answer? Yeah, I did bad math. Sorry, thank you. Yes, please correct mistakes when you see them. Interrupt me, please, nicely, politely. Yeah, that's just bad math, dude. 0.5. 2.5. Oh, I have the wrong electronegativity for oxygen. That's why the answer is one. My goodness, look right here. Look. There's right there. Come on, man. Sorry. 3.5 minus 2.5. I knew something was wrong because a chemist knows that that's a polar covalent bond. And if you get an answer that says it's not, it's wrong. And that's a polar covalent bond. Guideline says. Your polar covalent, if your difference is between 0 0.5 and 1.9, that difference depends on the teachers. You'll see inorganic teachers, they'll cut that 1.9 down a little bit. Organic teachers kind of have a bigger number there. And the main reason is it's not always about electronegativity. It's only part of a story. But when you're learning something for the first time, let's start with a part of the story and build on it later. Good idea? Good idea. And CF is just more polar covalent. That's 4.0 minus 2.5. Still polar covalent. How high does that number have to get for it to be ionic? Uh, close, 1.9. So we don't have ionics on this page. And this is definitely non-polar covalent. Delta En equals zero. <laughs> non-polar covalent. We're ready for an activity. And we're going to draw the most stable Lewis structure for the following. So we've got to remember our rules for Lewis structures. And what two words did come to your mind as soon as I said the name Lewis? Mm. Those, what are those dots? And that's not the whole story. They are valence electrons, and there's other valence electrons other than dots. They're called bonds. Oh, some people use. If you do use two dots for a bond, you're you're an old school person because that's what they were doing in the 20s. <laughs> okay, not these 20s, the previous ones. Okay, so yeah, we like dots and lines. And the, the most important thing is those are valence electrons. So your first thing you have to do is count valence electrons. Our periodic table, both in the room and on your exam, has the number of valence electrons at the top of the column in Roman numerals. Okay? So how many valence electrons does a fluorine have? Seven valence electrons. Two times seven, because there's two fluorines there. There's a carbon after that. Where did I get the four from? What's the Roman numeral above carbon? Okay. There's another carbon, there's a hydrogen, there's a fluorine. I could have grouped all the fluorines and made my job a little easier, right? I'm gonna get the same answer. Uh, 14, 18, 22, 23, 30, did you get 30? And over here, we got a seven. I like this because it says FBI. I, I like stuff like that. Four plus three plus three times seven. Uh, three times seven. What about the minus? Does that mean extra valence electrons or less valence electrons? More, because electrons are minus. How much more? Well, it's minus one, so one more electron. So 21, 22, 20. 32. Do you get 32? Good. And then we're supposed to lay out the skeleton. Now, the good news in organic chemistry is 
often the skeleton is hinted at by the way I typed it. On this molecule, there's two Fs on the far left, this one, two Fs on the far left, and a carbon, then a carbon, then a fluorine on the far right. And that hydrogen's not in the middle of the carbon and the fluorine, is it? No, you got to know hydrogen, its nature is to make how many bonds? Hydrogen's nature is to make two bonds. What universe is that? <laughs> One bond, right? I think he was answering a different question. How many electrons surround a hydrogen when it has a full octet? Which is an honest, honest mistake. That's two. So H only makes one bond. Never put it in the middle of anything because it, that's wrong. So your skeleton starts with an F on the left, goes to a C. There's another F on that same C. I don't care if you draw it up or down, doesn't matter. After that, what's to the right of this C? Another C. Don't worry about double bonds, triple bonds yet. Do that at the end. Uh, what about on that C? What are the two things? An H and an F. And I just realized I'm putting the answer where I, here. Uh, what's my fastest way? Just get rid of that. I wanted you to have a blank version of the question on the top of the screen, which you now do, and do the answer on the bottom version. And uh, right now, how many electrons have you accounted for? How many bonds do you have? One, two, three, four, five bonds. How many bond electrons is that? Bonds equals 10 electrons. So now you have to come up with 20. What am I doing here? Lone pairs. In fact, I should do it this way. Stepwise, right? Stepwise. Whoa. I always don't think they have stuff out there. What's not bad? <laughs> no? No? I'll live with it. I just want to show you stepwise where I'm going. I know I got extraneous stuff there too. But... Now I'm going to put lone pairs on and, and maybe get up to 20. Two, four, six. This is fluorine's nature, right? Yes. So there's no surprises here. You kind of know you had to do this before you counted any electron. How many was that? It was 18 and I needed 20. Use 18 with lone pairs. I like to always lone pairs in this stage. Two more. Put them on one of the carbons. You're not done. You are not done, not even close. You get zero points for that Lewis structure. Wow. Can he highlight maybe? No. Didn't get the dot. Killing me here, people. Not you, this computer. I don't know what I got. Yeah, most of it. And oh wow, I did it again. At least it came back this time. There's a bunch of stuff that cup. There's a nightmare up scenario up here. It's ghosting. Not that kind of cool. Okay. We're having early semester uh, glitches, that's all. I don't know how to make that neat. Minus 10, minus 20. 30, minus You said minus 10, right? Minus 10. And students always ask me, where did the 10 come from? I'm serious, every semester. So I just do this for them, and I do this for them. Okay, good. Uh-huh. And then use 18 with the lone pairs. 
you don't have to, I don't have to highlight them. Uh, black loan pairs. And the two more are right here. That's not a nice arrow. And there they are again, but they reappear over here. How come? Carbon always four bonds, zero LP. What's that LP again? Lone pairs. Is this the first time we've said this? Uh oh. You want to review Monday's lecture notes, please? There's a table. You must learn it before you begin this weekend. <laughs> okay? Yeah. You need the nature of the players in this game. What are the natures? Oh, how many bonds they make? How many lone pairs they have? What their electronegativities are? This is, this is the behavior of the players in this play called organic chemistry. You better learn this play or else you're going to fail. Okay? So. Uh, yeah, how far have we gotten this thing? We, we got part A done. Redraw the structure with proper geometry. We don't even know what that means. Some of us do. Do some of us? You remember geometry a little bit, right? In fact, I got good news for you. You learned about 12 geometries in 141. We need four. Hey, because it's carbon, right? Carbon can only make how many bonds? Or can't go beyond that. You went beyond that with the those transition metals. Sometimes you had eight things around them, right? Like octahedral and all of that six things. I'm sorry. But there you go. Okay. So how do you do geometry? That's a good question. You can't do geometry if you can't do hybridization. The hybridization is what predicts the geometry. And what is hybridization? What are we talking about when we're hybridizing? What are you hybridizing? Oh, fuel sources? Is that that kind of hybrid here? Electric versus gas? That means you've got a car that can use electric or gas, right? Well, hybridization for an atom does not mean that. What does it mean? Well, it means this atom now wants to make bonds. And it can't use its atomic orbitals anymore because in the atomic orbitals, there's those P's. Remember the P? Is there only one type of P orbital? How many types of P orbital are they? Are there three and what are their names? Their names reflect their direction. Don't they? So what are the three types of P orbital? Here is a P orbital. The green is the P orbital. Which one is this one compared to this one compared to this one? Because those are the three P orbitals. This one, whose direction is pointing along the X axis, is called PX. This one, pointing along the Y axis, is called PY. I didn't even verify I was on the video. I might have been off here. And then this one sticking at you and away from you, PZ. What are the angles between PY and PX? 90. 90. Does carbon ever have 90 degree angles? Answer, no. Because you can get those valence shell electron pairs further away from each other. Does that ring a bell when I said it that way? Valence shell electron pairs, they don't like each other. So they repel, right? That's a theory that says what the theory is. Perfect theory. Valence shell electron pair repulsion theory means you got to get the valence shell electron pairs as far apart from each other as possible because they hate each other, right? And 90 degrees ain't going to cut it. You can do better than that when there's only four things around your carbon atom, right? That's the most things around your carbon atoms, four. And you're saying some of them are 90 and then some of them are 180? Is that what you're saying to me? Are the angles different for some bond angles and from the same atom? Can you have different bond angles there than over here? No. The repulsion's even. You must space them evenly. You can't use atomic orbitals to do that. They have the wrong angle. 
So what, do you, what kind of orbitals do you have to make from these atomic orbitals? Now, the word was hinted at earlier. You can't do geometry unless you can do what first? Hybridization. And let me tell you how to predict the hybridization of any atom. You count two things that hybrid orbitals are used for. They're used to make the first bond between two atoms. That type of bond has a name and it's a Greek letter. A bond that is the first bond between two atoms is always called what kind of bond? Sigma. Okay, that's one role for hybrid orbitals to, put, to, to use to make sigma bonds. The other role for a hybrid orbital is a home for a lone pair. Those are the only two things hybrids are used for. That's two out of three things total in bonding. The third type of thing is not, nothing to do with hybrids. It's called a, what's the other kind of bond? Not sigma, pi. We don't use hybrids for that. We use what's left over after you hybridize. Let me start with an example. If you have a carbon that starts with an S and three P orbitals and you hybridize them all, like take all four of those things, an S and three P orbitals, hybridizing, you get four hybrids because you started with four atomic orbitals and the name comes from the fact that you have four fingers in the air, SP3, SP1, P2, P3, SP3. And in that case, you don't have any orbitals left over to make a pi bond. So a carbon with four sigma bonds has no more bonds, right? No pi. Now let's go to another carbon that's sp2. You got an S and how many Ps? That means your total of sigma bonds and what else is three? What's the other thing that hybrids are used for? Lone pairs. So the total has to be three. So you could have three sigma bonds or Whoa, two sigma bonds, one lone pair, or one sigma bond, two lone pairs. Total three, right? Sorry if I switch fingers there. Okay. So if I have a carbon that used an S and two of its P orbitals to make hybrids, there's a P orbital left over. What are you going to use it for? P makes pi. I don't think it gets easier than that. You just said P twice. It's just a different language. P makes P. But oh, it's a Greek letter for P second time. It's pi. It's really not a P either. Sorry. Okay. And what's the third scenario? We had SP3. That's four sigma bonds, no pi bonds, right? SP2 had three sigma bonds and one pi bond using a P orbital that you didn't use to make those SP2s. And then cut one more P off the list. First of all, why do we always have to use the S to make a hybrid? All the hybrids have S in their name. You can't just mix up a bunch of P orbitals and get a hybrid. Why not? S is, the, S is closer to the nucleus. You want to use it first. And what kind of bond do you want to make first, sigma or pi? Sigmas are stronger bonds. You want to make them first. So your sigma bond must have S as part of its name always. Uh, S is a contributor, sorry, towards making the hybrid. So here we go. We're finally going to start. I need to redraw the structure of copper. We don't know how to do that until we get the hybridization, and then I'll tell you the geometry. This guy right here, what color are the sigma bonds? And I apologize if you're colorblind. They're green. And how many green bonds are there to this carbon? Three. That means carbon is sp2. We'll put it in baby blue. Three sigma zero LP equals sp2 equals, in this case, trigonal planar. Yeah, trigonal planar it means it's flat, that's planar, and it's a triangle. So it's not drawn that way, is it? A triangle, you need to uh, easily space F and F and C. And same story here, right? So we're going to redraw it.
with angles closer to 120. Oh, that's redundant. I got degree sign there already. Okay, and we have a double bond. Lone pair, lone pair, lone pair, lone pair, lone pair, lone pair, lone pair. I go a little lower. Just a, a hair. Lone pair. Better geometry. That looks a little closer to 90 degrees there, doesn't it? Yeah, I think those Fs need to come down a little bit. Since I'm trying to draw it with right geometry, I should do a better job. It is my weak skill. Art, artistic endeavors, not so good. So, not a little closer. There. And then I need uh, big old dipoles. And which way? Well, that doesn't. That's not good. Which way does this dipole point towards the C? The more electronegative C is that we said? That made no sense. Ah, uh, the more electronegative F. The more electronegative F should be the same size, right? It looks a little bigger. Like I said, artistic ability, not so much. And there. Does that look like the mirror image of the one to the left? A little bit. And what about this guy? He's he's half as long, a little less. And why is it pointing the other direction? Yeah, he's more electronegative than it. Okay. So that that there is part. I'm sorry, I'm moving around on you. Place dipole vectors on all bonds. That's C. Part C right here. This was part B. And then we're going to add the dipole vector. Whoa. Now, with a computer, it's easy. Uh, let's review addition. Four plus two. Is it different than two plus four? No, so order doesn't matter. Addition, order doesn't matter. Math with vectors or non-vectors, order doesn't matter. So pick one of the vectors, just pick one. You wanna pick the CH? It only gave me the arrow, because but it's the right length, so I can work with that. I copied it, it's the same orientation it was before, I wanna make it look like it was before. There, I copied that. And then copy another one, but it starts where that one ended. Pick another one of the three. You want to go with uh, that one? Copy, paste. Where that one ended is where you start the next one. So I, I just decided I was going to do one, then two, then three. That was just my decision. So I've done the one, and I added two to it. What do you want? Three next? Three next, copy, paste. Did you give me the whole thing this time? No, no head. It's not right. And that was three. Where's four? Grab it, copy, paste it. It goes where three ended. And it points up. So you want to know your net dipole vector? Net goes net dipole vector goes from the very beginning. So where you started number one to the very end where you ended number four. Right from there all the way to there is the net dipole in blue for that molecule. So 
if you're asked for the net dipole, I want that blue thing where the first one started and where the last one ended. That's where my arrow goes from and to. So it's a polar molecule. You know how I know it's polar? That arrow is not zero. We had a question. So when you do the net vector vector, can you start at any? You could have started with two, then added one, and then added four, and then added three, and you'd have the same blue arrow because they're all based on drawing the molecule this orientation. You could verify, try one more example tonight. Start with a different order. Two, four, two, three, one. It should be the same length and the same direction. Okay, and then let's try to finish up the uh, other molecule, shall we? Sorry, not getting that down. And that would be D. Was that part D or C? Also part of C, D. We got a stray mark here. Saving. And we're going upstairs. No, no numbers. It's got to be a, an arrow with a, either an arrow with a direction or a zero. Nonpolar is quite common. You know that, right? Like CO2. We're going to do is just a quickie, quickie nonpolar for to take two seconds. <laughs> this molecule here and this, this there. You got two big old vectors. No, it's a little big on this page. Less than CF, but greater than CH. So follow the rule. You, you copy pasted the first one there, and where it ends is where that one begins. So your very beginning is here, and your very ending is the same place, right? If you did one, two, one, I can't even tell which order I went here. Uh, beginning equals end equals this theta of zero dipole. And make sure you know that's like unrelated and aside. And we got to go upstairs for our other molecule, FBI3. What was in the middle? Yeah, don't put fluorine in the middle, like ever. So tips. Never in the middle. H, F. Uh, that's one. Almost never in the middle. The other halogen, very rare. Oh, wow. I didn't hit that button this time. <laughs> oh, wrong, wrong icon, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> I'm losing it. I haven't trashed anything yet. <laughs> okay, tips, uh, what else, avoid, this is probably the best tip ever. O, O bonds. I know it doesn't work on this page. There's no oxygen at all, but in the future, if at all possible, what do I mean by if at all possible? Well, if I told you there's a molecule called ozone with a formula of O3, I don't think you can avoid an OO bond. End of story, okay? But if you have an ion like SO4 2 minus, you can avoid every OO bond by making S go in the middle, four O's around it. You didn't have a single OO bond because it was possible, and that's why you did it. OO bonds are dangerous and reactive and rare. We call them peroxides, by the way, right? You heard of peroxides? Weren't they exceptions to redox rules too? Yeah, a lot, a lot of stuff going on with peroxides. Those are two good tips to start with. So based on that, you're putting B in the middle, right? I mean, I is rarely in the middle. B is your central app. We, uh, we got our valence electrons. And green for our C 
central atom with uh, it's got an F over here. It's got uh, I I I. How many bonds was that? How many electrons is that? You better put 24 more on, right? Yeah. Eight. That's why there's an eight thing. Uh, 24, I think six times four is 24. Lone pairs, halogens need three lone pairs anyway. End of story, right? I'm not going to do uh, redraws. I'm, uh, my final answer is going to be all up here. Now, we're not quite done. Not quite done. Because there's a formal charge there with a minus charge, right? Now, your teachers back in 141 said, you must put a square box around this thing and a minus charge. Stop. I don't want it. I need more and less. <laughs> you're going to have a minus charge in this, but you're going to tell me where it really belongs. It belongs on one of the atoms because it, compared to the atom that's neutral on the periodic table, has an extra valence electron. Listen carefully. When you share two electrons, that's called a bond, right? It's like owning one. Just pretend everything, it's a fair world. Pretend, and it's a big pretend now. Pretend a bond is like you own one electron, okay? And if you have two bonds, you own two electrons, right? So fluorine here owns half of that, which is one, right? There's two electrons there. And it all, it's not sharing these, is it? It owns both of them, right? So it owns two, two, two is six, and one more is seven. Compared to fluorine up there, which owns how many? Seven. What's the formal charge? Nothing. Same story for uh, iodine. I didn't finish iodine, did I? Or I finished and hit a button that I shouldn't have? Yeah, sorry about that. There you go. Same for iodine, right? Same group. Boron on the periodic table owns three valence electrons, correct? Right? I, I, I. Here it shares eight. It has four bonds, right? Sharing eight like owning how many? Where's your minus charge? This boron feels more negative than that boron. Tell me that. Here's how I tell you that. You put the formal charge where it belongs. I personally like to circle my formal charges. You don't have to, I like to. So if you know there's a circle around a charge, it's a formal charge. It means it's not a minus sign like a math operation or anything, it's a formal charge, okay? And then the geometry comes in because that is the best structure, but it's uh, not got the right geometry by a long shot. I mean, goodness, man, that's less than 60 degrees there. And then this is like 200 and whatever degrees there. No, they have to equally be spaced, right? And there's four things around my boron. So one, what's your hybridization? Four sigma bonds, no lone pairs. Four sigma plus zero LP SP3. There's four things, right? Sigma bonds and lone pairs. That's what you count for hybridization. Don't invent your own method. They won't work. Okay? Hey, we did SP2 earlier, right? What do we know? What are we supposed to know about SP2? It's trigonal planar if surrounded by three things, which it is. SP2, if surrounded by three things, is always trigonal planar. SP3, if surrounded by four things, this thing's surrounded by four things, right? Boron has four things around it, right? 
surrounded by four things. Remember the name? It's kind of got four in the name. Tetrahedral. It has nothing to do with four things. That's a four-sided figure with four triangles. And what are the angles for tetrahedral? No, we can do better than that. Think about it. 90 would be a flat square. 90, 90, 90, 90. And one of them would be 180. It's like straight across is 180. That's no good. 109.5. That is your tetrahedral angle. And ladies and gentlemen, you have only three angles to memorize. Three. You please have to memorize. If you're SP3, your angle is 109.5. If you're SP2, it's 120. And the only one that's not on this page is SP. You know the angle for that one? No, no. SP means I got to get two things around this central atom. Two. What's the best angle you can do? Don't tell me that's the best you can do. 180. I got one straight out here and one straight over there. You can't get them further apart. So that's your only. That's your third angle. And what do you call it when the whole structure is ba uh, basically a straight line? Linear. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. So you guys have to learn how to draw a tetrahedron. The easy part is to draw the 109.5 that's in the page. Okay, so that would be 90 there. That's about 109. Point, that's a little much. If this is 90, 109.5 is about right there. Get rid of that. Those are 109.5. But the next ones are not in the plane of the page. You have to show me that the bond to F is uh, one of them is sticking out of the page and the third I is behind the page. And both of them are not in this region, they're in this region. Remember, you want to space the needle. Does it make sense if you do this? I mean, look, I'm going to draw something totally ridiculous. Why is that just insane? And what's your angle here? 270? <laughs> 220? And then what's your angle here? Uh, I don't know. 50? Don't do that. Hope you didn't copy that down. It goes like this, ladies and gentlemen. Well, not in red, though. What does that mean? Out of the page or behind the page? Yeah, out of or towards you. Hit me in the face. That's called a wedge. And going behind the page. That's a dash. Every angle here is 109.5. Yes, sir. Um, would it matter which, uh, which uh, atom would be? Oh, I, I, yeah, somebody's going to say, Dr. Whitaker, you changed the formula. That's that gentleman over there. Yeah. And it, it, yeah, it, it doesn't matter. You choose F and I here. I, I apparently didn't know how. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, any atom in this molecule in any of those positions is fine. It was a redo. And alone pairs. And don't forget formal charge also. Same spot as before. And that would be the answer for B. Is that right? This was A, this was B, and dipole vectors. Can we do the dipole vectors here in baby blue? 2.1 versus 2.5. That's small. Iodine 2.5, right? CSI. Tiny vector in blue. This one, it, why am I drawing the vector as a dash? Because it's pointing behind the page. Why am I drawing this vector as a wedge? Same reason. It's coming out of the page. I'm going to number those. Uh, just my choice. One, 
two, three, four. Because we got to add them, right? Hey, if I'm adding the numbers one and two and three and four, right? I can pair them up first, right? I can do the one and the two and then add the three and the four. I get the same answer. The reason I want to do that here is it's hard to do that wedge and dash. It really is. It's not hard to do the, uh, the one and the two. So let's do the one and the two like we did before. Ready? Copy the one. And where does the two start? Where the one ends. And before I do the three and the four, let's look at the answer of one and two only by itself. The answer, the net for one and two. Net one, two. Net one plus two. And it would be here from beginning to end, right? And you want to just look at that thing up here? Uh, I don't know what happened. Uh, please describe that blue one visually. Comes from these two light blue ones. Just describe how it's pointing. I mean, use how these two are pointing to describe how this ends up pointing. They started. They started like uh, they're both pointing away, right? So they might not be the right direction, but one was down, right? And then the other was there. So if we're looking, I'm trying to look at the screen here. Okay. What's, the, what's gonna be the, the thing between those two? Right in the middle. That's what I want to. I want to hear you say. It's in the middle of them. It's it's exactly in the middle of them, wasn't it? Uh, where are we here? Starboard. Isn't this exactly in the middle of those two? Yeah. It points. I mean, it's got to rotate clockwise that amount, and then if you keep rotating clockwise, it goes to there. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. And. I made a mistake with this three here. Can somebody fix it for me? There was a huge mistake with this, the way I drew this thing. I, 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 I thought it was an iodine, didn't I? It's too small. Somebody said that. That's a big mistake because we won't get the right answer. You would have predicted this molecule is not polar, wouldn't you? If I left it like it was before, that's not a good prediction. So let's talk wedges and dashes now. Okay, you need to need to look at me. Sorry. Uh, so wedges are coming out towards you, and dashes are coming towards me, right? So that's a wedge, and this is a dash. Dash. I want you to be able to see it. That's away from you. What's in the middle? It's the same answer as before. If these were the same vector, like I mistakenly had on the page before, they had the same distance. What is the middle between these two? Right in the middle. So it would be there. They're not the same length though, right? So what I did was the CI4, a BI4 molecule. And you would have said this dipole looks just when I add those two, if they're the same length, it's going to be this, right? But you're adding a big wedge one here. So it's not going to be in the middle. It's going to be closer to this one, right? I don't want you to try to do this with uh, copy paste because the wedge and dash, it's misleading, right? The amount this thing goes to the left is underrepresented because some of it's coming out of the page. So it's really longer than you think. A lot of that length is it's coming out of the page at you, right? So I'm just going to estimate three plus four estimate. And I want you guys to be on board with me. Estimate three plus four. 
and I want a reasonable estimate. Does it point to the left or right? There's an easy question. They are both pointing to the left. Yours must point to the left. Does it point up or down? That's harder. This one points a little down. This one points a little up. This one goes a lot longer. It's pointing down a little. OK, so it's going to have some wedge to it. If they were equal sizes, there wouldn't be wedges or dashes. They'd look like 180 degree rotation of this, right? If they were the same length, you'd get a 180 degree rotation of this for the three plus four. But they're not the same length, so the wedge won out. And the estimate would be not as down as three is, right? Only a hair down. And a lot of wedge left. Okay, so your start was here on this, and your end is here. And this was the start and end here. That was my, I just estimated it. So where this one ended is where you copy this. We're going to do now one plus two plus three plus four. One plus two came out to this. Three plus four came out to this. Then I'm a terrible artist. I'm trying to copy the one I, I should have just copied it, seriously. And now you're going from here to here. That's your net. Yeah, I know. And all of this time, I'm going to level with you. This is really important but I never tested. There's a reason, a uh, selfish reason. Uh, I'm very bad at this. I've developed some skills where I can be competent at this, but facial orientation of things is a, is a deficit I have. Artistic ability, spatial orientations and, and calendar dates. Oh, don't even get me started on that. But anyway, we got that. You gotta know your limitations. And a lot of people are in the same category. In fact, it's gifted people are good at this. I could put it on there for them, but I'm not. So I might ask a question, just estimate the dipole. And you should be able to kind of just look at your picture here and be able to draw something. It's going to look a little more like this than anything else, right? These are almost canceling each other-ish. And then this thing dominates a little bit. So just could you just Estimate this. Is this pointing the right way? No, sorry. This is the net. Black. Does it make sense? The net is pointing towards where the fluorine was. Why, why is that not pointing where this was? So long. I got issues. This bond's not even pointing along the line. Can I rotate it? I've got a point along. See, I don't even like my own question anymore. That's still pretty close, but it needs to rotate too. And he's told us he doesn't want to put it on a test anyway. Why am I wasting all of our time? Yeah. Take a night to this one. I don't even. Is, it, is the video on? No. I killed it. Did we ever do a video? Oh man. Non video, huh? I think we, we have a video going. Yeah, here we are. Oh, we got a video point. I'm talking about stuff you can't see. Is that probably what's going to happen? And it's still going. Sorry. Hi, and bye.